Uh, welcome back. Uh, today we're still talking about World War II. And what we're going to do is talk about the different sides of the war today. So as we see here, um, the, the, the main slide that we're, we're talking about, the, the two competing sides during uh, the, the Second World War, you have, you have the Allies and you have the, the Axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to we'll start with the Allies over here, uh, the West. We'll also talk about the East as well as a, a completely different subject, which uh, is a little new, I think, when, when discussing World War II in, in the classroom. But I think it's important to make the distinctions between the two sides of the Allied front. And, and then we're going to talk about the, the access as well. So what we'll do is, uh, there we go, let's go into the West. All right, so the West... Is, is is a a faction sort of of of, of World War two and, and some of the things we see with with co countries that are considered the West uh, they they happen to favor democracy in capitalism uh, this is this is true for the United States as well as France and Great Britain the, the three main members of the West the, the Alliance especially and, and they fight in the European campaign for for the most part uh, but however even though they favor democracy and capitalism all three all three of these guys right here they all had imperial possessions so we can look at France let's just start with France for a second I got this nice neat little map of the French Empire uh, so this is this is till 1939 and in here's France <laughs> and and here's all their colonial possessions including uh, a Vietnam and Laos uh, Madagascar large large swaths of, of Western Europe or I'm sorry Western Africa and as well as a, a French Guiana in, in South Africa America. So, so the French have have just this very extensive imperial holdings all throughout Africa. However, they're they're nowhere near as bad as the as the worst offenders. And maybe you've heard this phrase before, but the the, the sun never sets on the British Empire. And then this is the empire in the twenties. But but you pretty much can ex extend this out and, and actually over time after World War One, um, the British actually get a lot of influence over this is uh, Arabia right here and many of us know it today as Saudi Arabia but but, but the British also owned uh, standard things the British owned like Canada and the uh, Australia they also owned uh, the Indian or India over here or the Indian Empire and they also had uh, parts of South Africa all the way up to the Sudan and if we know anything about the regions that are colored in red here is that these are huge oil producing states. And so right now you have Britain essentially owning most of the world's reserves of oil in all of these positions right here. And that's for something interesting that that will actually carry on. So so that's those are just some of the, the interesting aspects of imperial possessions and the United States. Our, ourselves, we also had imperial possessions. Uh, at this time, after the Spanish and Amer Spanish American War, we kind of lost control of Cuba down here, but we we had the Philippines and a lot of other Pacific holdings as well. So, so we are not immune to this this stereotyping of imperial possessions, which is very interesting. We also have that all of these were previous allies during during the Great War. They received reparations from Germany after the war, um, causing Germany's debt to skyrocket so high, and that causes larger problems in the future. All these countries were also founding members of the League of Nations, though the United States um, didn't officially sign and join the organization. And there's some tolerance of socialism and communism, but there's a lot of reactionary efforts, and we see that in the United States especially. Over in the United States, we are, our, our main gentleman who is representing us is this, uh, this Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He's the 32nd president and the longest serving president in the United States. He, he was trying to reform the U.S. government, and, and you may know this through previous studies of the Great Depression, but he tried to implement the New Deal as well as um, trying, trying to deal with this mixed support in the nation between uh, government support and um, rugged individualism as many of the Republicans and conservatives at the time. Over here, you have France uh, with this gentleman here. His name is Charles de Gaulle. 
He was a hero of World War One. He also became an influential politician and leader. He he will be in French politics for the next fifty or sixty years. Charles de Gaulle is a pretty influential guy, and and France, of course, as we'll learn, has to deal with certain problems with its military and its its economy because of the Great Depression. But we'll go into that more. Just remember this guy over here, Charles de Gaulle, and then we have Great Britain. Um, two leaders who are most known with Great Britain is uh, we have Neville Chamberlain over here, uh, as well, who is the Prime Minister between 1937 and 1940, and, and then after him we have Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister between 1940 and 1946. Uh, we'll learn a lot more about these two gentlemen specifically. Um, it's interesting to see what happens in the course of world events at this time. And, and <laughs> well, you, you'll see. It's quite fun. So we have the three main powers of the West. And many of us are most associated with the United States up here, us, us being from this area. And we believe us to have more, a lot more of the influence on the West. Though, though France and Britain really did traditionally codify this alliance after the you know, initial struggles of uh, Napoleon and stuff like that. So it's interesting to look at the West as part of the Allies. But now we're going to move on to a, a subject that's a little bit more uh, on, on the I wouldn't say it's it's controversial at all, but it, we don't really talk about it in, in this way. But we also have the Allies in the East as well. You have the Soviet Union and, and China, who were both allies of, of the West over here during the Great War, which is really funny because over here you have these guys who are favored democracy and capitalism all the way, but as we as we know from China and the Soviet Union and, and communism of this time, the, the communism was not focused on democracy. It wasn't focused on the free market. It was about taking the rights back from the, from the, the oligarchies and such, and giving it back to the people, though we might know that gentlemen like Joseph Stalin and Trotsky and Lenin, they all had this grand idea that they were doing it for the people, but in the end, it, it didn't necessarily turn out so well. Um, for, well. For Joseph Stalin, it turned out pretty good, but not for the guys he was under. So what we're going to do is kind of understand what's going on, and we're going to start with China. Uh, China, we could just look at this map right here. And an interesting point, China was broiled in a civil war since, since 1931, and, and even before that, uh, a lot of imperialist forces from, from Great Britain actually influenced this, and a huge communist revolt led by this gentleman here, Mao Zedong, and, and you'll hear a lot more about him in the future as well. Um, he was the main leader of the, the communist loyalists who fought against the nationalist uh, movement led by this guy right here, Chiang Kai-shek. And you can see him here, too, in a picture with FDR and Churchill at the Cairo conference in, in 1943, uh, codifying the, the alliance between these guys right here. Now, sh now Chiang Kai-shek and, and Mao Zedong were, were fierce, fierce opponents. And, and during this whole period of time, from, na from 1939 before all the way past 1945, this civil war is happening the whole time. Um, the Chinese Republic with under Chiang Kai-shek is technically an authoritarian regime, though they were under the, the, the mask of, of a republic, of a democracy, which, which is interesting. So, uh, you know, you look at Mao Zedong, and even though at, at, after what happened, when he came into power, it, you know, he, was, he felt justified. He needed to change the powers of, of, this, of this Chiang Kai-shek and his, his Republicans who were simply taking control. And the Civil War really engulfed the, the entire nation. And you can see a modern, as I said, a modern picture. And uh, over here you have the, the Loyalists pretty much covering the majority of the country and the Republicans only holding a, a small amount of influence in this corner over here. So let's move on. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the Soviet Union. Um, everyone's Everyone's favorite topic, I think, because of the, the, the communist aspect. So uh, you, they're called the USSR, the United um, States of Socialist Republics. Uh, they are mostly avoided the economic collapse of the Great Depression under this gentleman right here, Joseph Stalin. And many would see that as a, a success. But um, 
Joseph Stalin was was successful in so many ways that are, are not very helpful for individuals. Uh, so Russia and its satellites were still reeling from a recent Russian civil war. Now that kind of happened after World War One, and uh, Lenin came in. He was exiled in Germany for a long time, and he pretty much led this communist revolution in, uh, this is the USSR right here, or the Soviet Union as as we know it best as. So this huge, huge stretch of land. Um, however, years of infighting between Leon Trotsky and Stalin, these two guys right here, uh, led to a, a sort of inner party civil war as well which is yeah, after the initial civil war you know you have to have someone's got to take powers and these were the two main forces at the time and joseph stalin ended up winning winning um leon trotsky was actually exiled in 1928 and about a few years later i think it was in 1935 he was he was killed in mexico by the by the kgb not the kgp um with an ice pick P pretty intense stuff um, but so Stalin once 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 Trotsky got out and he had this time to do what he wanted to do, he decided he's going to launch what the, what's called the five year plan. And the five year plan was an economic plan to to get the USSR back on the world stage of production. But what actually happened was this five year plan was was leading into this thing called the Great Purge. And down here you could see uh, pictures. Of, of what gulag work was like at the at, in the gulag archipelago and these were just forced labor camps that were that individuals were sent to a political dissonance uh, intelligent people who stalin saw as a threat and, and really this guy right here you you can see him holding a baby and and people you know stalin of course wants him to love him this is a great example of uh soviet propaganda but but joseph stalin in a lot of ways really wanted to have complete control so i needed to get everyone out of the way who was going to in any way threaten that and that's where it, what led to these great purges and millions and millions of people died no one really knows the complete amount uh, some would say up in the tens of millions or or even more it really does depend and, and the five-year plan only call caused mild economic growth with with inside the soviet union and a lot of people attribute that to the great purge you're killing off people who are the most intelligent individuals you know you're not living in a meritocracy anymore you're living in a you know, it's not even communism it's, it's we refer to it as stalinism nowadays which is this mighty brutal dictatorship and stalin really codifies that and um we'll see that though the guys we're going to meet in the next slide might be bad joseph stalin out of out of this whole thing really does belong more on this continuum towards the access because he he will learn more about the, the history of it why the soviet union plays a very precarious role with inside the the fighting forces over here in the allies so um so the next video what we're going to do is we'll talk about the axis powers and then um yeah so uh thanks for thanks for joining me and i'll see you in the next video